Hey, what's going on guys? Cookies here. This is a plus 20 spires on my Holy Paladin that I did during the Grievous week. And I just wanted to do like a walkthrough VOD review rather than a live commentary of this one. So we're just going to go ahead and play the VOD and I'll just kind of talk about the dungeon, talk about the different poles, talk about the bosses and whatnot. This is on Fortified Sanguine Grievous. And the first big note about... Um, spires that i'll mention i'll just let this play while i talk um the big the biggest thing about spires is making sure that you have cooldowns ready and available for pridefuls like the pridefuls are going to be the biggest struggle especially on a grievous week for like a high spires key the lower key you go obviously the less dangerous prideful is so the less you have to worry about but the main thing with prideful the, the reason it's particularly difficult to deal with in Spires is because a lot of the pulls that you do right before Pride spawns are pulls where you need to use cooldowns or that are, you know, tricky pulls to begin with or the DPS are popping cooldowns so you don't have very many, like, many options for the actual Pride. Um, going back really quick for this first pull, um, this is where you're pretty much just going to use almost every cooldown you have as a Paladin. Uh, right off the bat, and obviously Venthyr Paladin is going to be like different playstyle than than Kyrian, but all that Venthyr really does is it just you it relies more heavily on cooldowns than Kyrian does. And what happens here is I get hit by a frontal. This is like really bad positioning. I literally go and stand on top of the tank. So the ideal scenario here, if I want a melee, I just need to get behind the group. So I need to stand back here with the other melee. Um, the other option is I just bubble early. Like I could literally just bubble here because there's nothing like really preventing me. And making me want to hold my bubble because I'm not going to need it for anything in particular. So I think just bubbling this first pull is completely fine. Other than that, you're pretty much popping all your cooldowns and then you're just playing whack a mole if anyone's HP drops. And then, other than that, you're just helping deal damage. And that's pretty much the first pull of Spires. Um, the main thing to watch out for as a healer, in case you're not aware, is the. Um, it is called. Let me see, it's from the Castigators. I just forget what the exact cast is called. I'll do it here in a second. It's Manifest, it's Burden of Knowledge, that's what it is. That Burden of Knowledge needs to be kicked, but a lot of the time, especially if you're pugging, it's not going to get kicked. So anytime you see that, um, that Burden cast go off, you need to just be ready to instantly dispel whoever it goes on. I'm trying to think if I can find a pull. I think on the first pull it did go off on somebody. Usually in this first pull it'll almost always go off because it's really hard to see all the interrupts like while we're interrupting the Goliath and whatnot. Yeah, I can see here bur two Burden of Knowledge go out. One goes on me, so maybe that's actually what ended up killing me instead of the frontal. I don't know if I died to the sweeping blow. But anyways, one debuff went on me and the other one went on the monk it looks like. So if he doesn't like instantly defuse it, you should just be dispelling. Like as soon as those two casts go out, I'm looking at my raid frame or I'm looking at my party frames and immediately looking to dispel the debuff. Because it will just it'll instantly start ticking for a lot of damage. Like you can see here the monk popped Karma and Fortify Brew and he goes down to like 10% HP, so it's a very, very, very nasty debuff. Uh we'll go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. This next pack, same thing. You have a Castigator in here, so you need to watch those Dispels. And then this is the pull where we're going to have Prideful as soon as this dies, so I need to make a mental note of this. I use Wings on this pull so that I have it back up for the boss. But um, you just have to be... So there's that Dispel again. Uh, and I bubble super late. That was like completely pointless bubble because I already dispelled the debuff. So I just need to be... Planning what CDs I'm going to use for this pride, which is almost nothing. So I tell the mage that he's going to definitely need to combust. And that's the thing if you have like classes like a, ma a fire mage that can use consistent cooldowns, or even like Windwalker Monk can do it, they need to be pressing, they need to make sure that they have their cooldowns up for Prideful because you at least want like one major cooldown for every single pride, especially on Grievous Week. Like Grievous Week makes the pride so much harder. Um, so here I just have Guardian, or I have uh, Holy Avenger coming up. So I'm planning to use that for the pride. I won't have wings and I won't have uh, my Ash and Hollow. So there I pop the Holy Avenger and then it's really just I'm generating and spending and making sure that I'm 
fully topping people off before I start working on like the next person, for instance, unless they're only at one stack. But when people are at multiple stacks, like right there, I in I full heal myself and then I start working on somebody else as a paladin. It's very important to not try to think too much about AOE healing. And like right there, that pride got really messy because I didn't save wings. So like I essentially should have saved wings or made sure I had something like Aura Master or Ashen Hollow backup for that pride. And we used Ashen Hollow on the first pull and we just got here fast, so couldn't really prevent that. And I think it's better to save Ashen or to use Ashen Hollow on like the boss, for instance, anyways. And I always wait till the boss moves the first time to cast my Ashen Hollow because otherwise it's just gonna move out the moment that the fight starts. So I'll wait until the bird plants himself the first time and then I'll use Ashen Hollow. And it's also better to try to like next time I should have aimed my Ashen Hollow. Like here in the middle of the room, luckily he runs back into it, but if I aim it in the middle of the room here, it almost get him in every single spot he runs to. So, just kind of positioning it a little bit better would definitely help. Because even here it would have got like extra uptime on him as he's walking over. And it's definitely not a cooldown that you want to overlook because it does do a significant amount of damage and healing. And then this fight, really what it is, I'll uh... I guess I don't have to rewind it. So like when the boss is down here, when Kintara is down on the ground hitting your tank, that's when you really need to be in like healer mode and making sure that you're dispelling these debuffs or one of these debuffs when they go out and then just keeping the tank as topped off as possible because the overhead slashes can just randomly one shot them, especially when they accidentally get these debuff stacks. And then when the boss is up in the air, like right here, this is where I can just completely turn off my brain to thinking about healing and I can just full DPS the boss. Obviously on Grievous Week, that's gonna be different because I have to, you know, recover some of these players, but doing damage is what you essentially wanna look for as any healer when she's flying up in the air, because when she's flying, there's pretty much nothing going on and there's no danger whatsoever. Even the charge spears that she throws do almost no damage on even on like a high key. But yeah, again, especially playing as Venthyr Holy Paladin, it's all about just really maximizing your cooldown usage and just playing this game. But this this applies to every healer playing this game of like really debating your cooldowns and deciding like ahead of time, like really thinking ahead and being proactive with your cooldowns and how you're going to use them and where, you know, what pulls are going to happen in the next few minutes and... So like when we're when we're pulling this pack, I'm thinking about the next pack that we're pulling. I'm thinking about like the next pack of trash or the next one or when pride is going to spawn. Like I'm thinking about all these things instead of like what's happening in the moment, because that's how you, you know, be more proactive as a healer is like plan and understand what you need to be, you know, saving for and stuff. And if you don't know that stuff, that's where you just need to do trial and error and press your cooldowns a lot if you don't know where to use them. And then when you make mistakes and your group dies or there's a really hard pull and you weren't able to outheal it, that's when you go back and you say, okay, next time, you know, I need to make sure I have a cooldown for that pull. And then every time you do that dungeon from then on, you're going to remember that pull in particular where, you know, last time I told myself I need to save cooldowns for that pull. Uh, this pull is just super annoying. Um, what you can do to help is just stun the skirmishers, so I'll always stun one that looks like he's about to jump away or one that's kind of like already getting away from the group to begin with. And then what you're essentially doing here is the first thing is definitely stand in melee because if everyone stands in melee they won't hurl, but once they jump away obviously you can't really stop them. Um, and once they start hurling they're just going to target random players every time. So you just need to really watch people's HP bar and again just play like a game of whack-a-mole and... Make sure that you're just instantly topping them off the moment they get a hurl. And we'll go ahead and skip to the next pride because this pack doesn't really do too much. Again, this is another poll where like, I'm thinking that when this poll dies, we get pride. So I need to be careful for what cooldowns I'm using, but I also need to be aware that I may need a cooldown for this, so for instance I pop Holy Avenger, but I'm saving Ash and Hollow, I'm saving Aura Mastery, and I know that I'm going to have wings coming up soon. We'll move forward to where we end up getting Pride. So there's our wings coming back off cooldown. Here's the Pride. And then I'm going to immediately drop Ash and Hollow, and it unfortunately goes on the ceiling. I think it still ends up affecting us and healing and doing damage, but very awkward. 
Maybe it doesn't, I can't really tell. It's not doing very much extra damage, so maybe it didn't. Huh. Hard to tell. And then I pop wings. And then if I need it, I can pop Aura Mastery at the very end of the pride here. And it's definitely always best to pop uh, Aura Mastery at the end of your pride rather than at the, the start, because that's when you're taking the most amount of damage, obviously. And then the Ether Drivers, it's really just making sure you dispel instantly if they get any cast off, helping CC them as much as possible. As a Paladin, you can use like Blinding Faith and stuff to interrupt them. And other than that, it's mostly kind of up to your tank to handle it. But even right there, like I insta dispel him as soon as he gets one stack. I could have waited for the second one, but he was already low HP, so it was a little scary. And then I'm pretty sure we just hard CC this entire pack and kill it, so. Oh, do we? Oh, never mind, we end up using cooldowns. Yeah, Grievous is a paladin. It's all about really singling people out and getting them topped off. Um, rather than like, oh, this person's low, I'll use Holy Shock, and then this person's low, I'll use Word of Glory, and then this person's low, I'll use Holy Shock. Like, you just want to focus on one person at a time unless someone is immediately in danger of dying right then. Then that's when you switch targets. But like here, I'm like, okay, I'm going to top off the Druid. Next, I'm going to top off the Mage. You know, then I'm going to work on the tank, like, whatever it may be. Like, even there, I, I probably could have just finished topping off the mage, but I, I think I assumed that he would get topped off from the next Holy Shock that I cast, because he had a Glimmer on him. So, it's just all about that decision-making of making sure that you're focusing one player at a time. I'll skip a little bit ahead. This is where I'm going to drop Ash and Hollow. I know that Pride is going to spawn after this, so I drop Ash and Hollow. It's going to last through this whole pull, and then it also has, you know, the potential to last somewhat into Prideful, depending on when it spawns. And then I also have Wings coming up. I have Ore Mastery coming up, so I can be, you know, I can be aware that it's okay to drop Ash and Hollow here on this pull, because this pull is going to last a decent amount of time, and I have these cooldowns coming up, so I'll just save these for the Prideful. Because as much as you want to focus on making sure that you're prepared for each pride full and each like major pole in the dungeon, you also need to make sure that you're prepared for these poles that are, you know, potentially very dangerous for your tank or just making, you know, these big poles on Fortified Week where they're going to take a while to die. So like even there, I use Ash and Hollow at the start of this pole. It's already a minute off of its cooldown. And that's huge to be able to like put those abilities on cooldown when you can without endangering your group. Because that's extra damage, that's extra healing, It's it just adds a lot to... The more you can cast a spell in a dungeon, the more effective it's going to be throughout the entire run, essentially. And then here we use Wings. This is where I'd probably be popping Ore Mastery right about now, because we have, you know, multiple people at multiple stacks, and it's just looking a little scary. There I pop Ore Mastery. I think it was fine. It definitely could have popped out a little early though, because we had like a second and a half left over by the time the pride died, so just a little bit earlier would have been better. This pull, nothing too special. We're just helping interrupt, staying away from frontals, doing some damage. I'll go to the next boss because that's like one that people really struggle with. Let me spear this pull. I again I'm dropping Ash and Hollow. I know that Pride spawns as soon as all this stuff dies. But I have Holy Avenger up, I have Aura Mastery coming up, and probably for the Pride I'm going to also have Wings, because by the time all this stuff dies, my Wings is going to be that much closer off cooldown, if not already off cooldown, and then we fight Pride for, you know, probably at least 30 seconds, so that's definitely enough time to, like, let my Wings come up by the end of Pride, worst case. Also, as, uh, as Holy Paladin, you'll rarely ever see me cast Flash of Light or Holy Light, and that's because you just, it's so much less effective unless you absolutely can't get in melee or you feel like, you know, you have to press those buttons to save someone. But even then, like, it's usually more efficient. Say someone's in danger like this Druid, it is literally more efficient for me to walk in melee like I just did and Crusader Strike and then Word of Glory him with the Holy Power I gained rather than use a Flash of Light on him and then, like, Holy Shock once it's off cooldown and then Word of Glory because it's just actually more effective healing to use Crusader Strike and other abilities to generate holy power and then spend that holy power. 
And you could say, like, when you flash of light your beacon target, you get holy power. But even then, it's like the amount of healing that it's doing is so little. And that's why the only time you'll ever see me cast it is usually on the person who has beacon on them on the tank when I can't get into melee. Here we have wings and holy avenger up, so we could use, you know, either one or both or whatever we want to do for pride. Usually as Benthyr Holy Paladin, you run Holy Avenger, so I would say you usually don't want to use them combined unless you're purely trying to do a bunch of damage. But if you're trying to go for healing, if you combine Wings and Holy Avenger, especially if you have the Sanctified Wrath talent instead of Awakened, it's just so much healing that it's usually unnecessary. Like even here, I let you know, I intentionally essentially allow us to get low because I want to save Holy Avenger for the boss and I want to save like my bubble for the boss and I don't want to just spend everything on the pride and then have literally nothing to heal during the boss. And that first debuff that goes out, I just bop the person who gets it. You could say you could save bop until the fight gets a little more hectic and stuff, but I just like doing it right away so that I can help do as much damage as possible with the duration of lust that we have because then I don't have to heal at all and we still have another 15 seconds of lust. And so that's just a lot of extra damage I can be contributing into the group. And this boss, there's not really a secret trick to it. It's really just where the tank puts the, the spinning orbs and then just making sure that you're playing DDR, which I really don't have any e advice on dodging. Like right there, I get hit. I should pretty much be dead, but... That boss just takes a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error, and it's more about just being really focused on dodging rather than focus. You have to, like, take away some of your ability to play the game in order to do that. Um, none of these pulls really are that important. We'll see. I think we end up pulling this. These guys will drop Force Confessions, which if you don't dispel it instantly in a high key, you'll pretty much die instantly. Um, right there it gets interrupted luckily i don't remember if it goes off on somebody i don't think it does anymore but essentially what that does is it spawns all these like orbs around the person and it just does so much damage that it just it kills them so fast it's like the castigator but even stronger so now you get stuck in the sanguine really unfortunate can't really do anything i was tempting yeah i tried using blinding faith but it doesn't really help because it just disorients him for half a second, so not going to really make him walk out of it randomly. Um, okay, so for this boss, you're really just doing damage as much as you can and then saving any holy power without over exerting holy power or anything, and then spending that holy power and then keeping like glimmer and holy shock and whatnot on the person who gets targeted with the. Uh, the main like mechanic of the the of the fight. Sorry, I'm like pretty tired right now, but it's the purifying blast, so we're gonna be using like you know a lot of our healing on there. And there we see that the mage alters, so I'm just gonna apply to a glimmer to him, and then I should pretty much just let him do his own thing. So there he alters back, and now I can start healing because he still has a little bit of the dot left over. So I throw you know I refresh glimmer, and then we're gonna spend holy power on the druid. I definitely need to get the debuff tracked on my frames because being able to see the duration of how long it's going to last would definitely help. There I use my immunity. You generally just use your immunity every time you have it on this boss if he targets you with Purifying Blast. Because there's nothing, unless you're planning to use your immunity to soak up the orbs obviously, but we usually just have tanks soak up the orbs. So you can actually just soak them all and not press anything. And they're totally fine. And again, while he's soaking these orbs, I am keeping him alive. I'm using Sack. I'm keeping Glimmer on him. I'm doing that kind of stuff. Spending Holy Power if I feel I need to. But other than that, I'm trying to do as much damage as I can to the boss because he takes double damage during this. Okay, so that's pretty much that boss. Just, you know, single target heal and um, just really keep an eye out on the players getting hit by Pure Flying Blast. And just spam heal the tank during uh, when he's soaking up all the orbs. 
Now, these guys, there's not, again, really a fancy trick to beating them, but once you see where these lines go off from the weapon, um, you can safely stand wherever they didn't go. So, like, for instance, let me find a good screen, like a good portion of where they are. Hold on. If we have them, let me pull up my pin tool. Um, okay, so if we have the spear like so, we'll just use this spear as an example. So when the spears get thrown, they face in the direction that they were thrown usually, and you can tell which way they're faced because the there's like a slant to the spear, right? So the spear is like slanted down and kind of pointed in this direction, for instance, like here. And then that is where you tell like the rest of the spear. So for instance, it's going to shoot out. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll shoot out like a, a cross. So it'll shoot like this, it'll shoot like this, and it'll shoot like this. And that's how you pretty much determine where it's going. And this might be slightly off. It may just be like based on the exact, you know, trajectory of the, the spear. We can go ahead and play it and see if it was if I was close at all. Um, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna do that. Yeah, so I think this one is gonna shoot off more, and like I don't even know if this one's actually gonna detonate before. Doesn't look like it now. But that's essentially how you tell which way they're going. Is like the spear is slanted down into the ground, and that's how you know. You know where the spear is going to be, where all the the lines that shoot out from it are. And that was me getting hit by a frontal. Really unfortunate. I played pretty bad in this key, but we're getting used to the Holy Paladin. Definitely a learning process. Nothing really to go over this guy, it's really just dodging the spears again, so hopefully the way I explained it helps slightly, but it's just one of those things that you're going to struggle with, like the spears are just awful the way that they design them, so it kind of sucks. The one thing I will mention is when everything dies, they, the spears will keep detonating for a short while, so make sure you be very careful of that, like running through here like we all are, it's actually really dumb. You just stand still until all the spears are done for sure, and then they start disappearing. And then this last guy, you just have to pump a lot of healing, but if you use the spear on this guy, which you should on Fortified Weeks, and you should also use Lust, um, if you're doing that, make sure you're helping your group do as much damage as you possibly can within the, the duration of the spear and the Lust, because the faster this guy dies, the less of a problem he is. He really doesn't become a problem until he's ticking people down like this, and he's throwing spears, because now you have multiple spears that you have to dodge, and you have this dot, which is making it to where if anyone gets hit by a single line of the spear, you just instantly die, and there's no you know chance of surviving it. Here's the last pride. We have all of our cooldowns. We have combust coming up, but I'm gonna just use ash and hollow, and then I'll probably get an ash and hollow by the time like by the last phase of the fight. I could opt to use something like wings instead, so that I could use ash and hollow on the boss on pull. But either way, I think ash and hollow is just you know overall better and I do end up using wings also so it's kind of hard to tell like you know what the right choice is but for the boss you don't really need like a crazy amount of cooldowns especially in the first phase you only really need cooldowns when the phases are transitioning so for instance when this is another thing I'll skip ahead for because this boss is very uh, lackluster in terms of what it does Always be ready to AoE heal for the detonation, dispel there's somebody every time they get this debuff. There I could have dispelled the mage and then the monk could have diffused magic it, but the mage could also ice block it technically, so it doesn't really matter either way. It's just diffuse will actually do damage to the boss because it puts the, the debuff kind of back on the boss in a way. So the healing you're going to need to do in this fight that you need to be most concerned about is after this orb phase is finished. So when the orb phase is finished, people are going to be gaining the st this stacking debuff throughout the whole entire time that you're in the intermission. And then once we throw the spear and the boss comes back down, everybody retains their stacks for an extra 8 seconds. 
So like these debuffs actually hit so hard. Like you can see there, I let the druid die. Like I almost die, I have to bubble. So what I should have done here, like reviewing this, is first thing is I should make sure everyone has a glimmer by the time we're out of here. That should be my main priority is getting everyone glimmer. Unfortunately, there's no way to like generate holy power properly. So this is like a really rough phase for paladins. And then as soon as we come down here, like I should be spending this holy power. I should be, you know, dispelling somebody. I should be doing everything I can. I should have already bubbled myself just because I knew like here I don't have wings. I don't have aura mastery. I don't have lay on hands. I don't have ashen hollow. I just use sack on somebody and they're still low. Like right here, I should literally just be bubbling to get rid of my own stacks and then just focusing healing into the, the druid. And like even there, I made a big mistake where the monk uses diffuse magic right here. You can see his debuffs go away, but then I still go forward with targeting him and healing him. If I would have just targeted the druid there instead, we would have not had the druid died and it would have just, you know, been completely solved. So that's pretty much this whole fight is you just really want to watch the, uh, the end of each intermission is where it's going to be the most painful as a healer for sure. And then I think towards the end of this fight, I end up dying. This is another thing that you really want to be careful of, is if the boss is getting close to transitioning uh, into the intermission phase, you want to make sure that everyone is nice and topped off, because if, when you go into the intermission here, when she flies away, she does like a burst of AoE damage to the entire group. So, usually it's not that much damage, but it still is relevant if the group isn't topped off, and you're especially on like a Grievous week, because then it's that much more that you have to play catch up. I think also here, something that I need to get better about doing is just dispelling on cooldown. Like as soon as we get this second stack, like there I dispel myself, so that's good. And then we go back in, and this time I keep everybody nice and topped off. We also ended the phase like significantly earlier, so it was a lot easier. But I think, you know, using your personals, using immunities if you have them to clear your stacks without hesitation. Like don't, don't sit there and save your immunity for a rainy day. Like just use it to help keep yourself ahead of the game, essentially. Same thing with using stuff like Sacrifice. So this is where I end up dying. I tried to bot myself. I didn't know if it would work or not. And we almost scuffed the key here, like, so badly. We were so like, oh, man, this is so... You know, we had five minutes left. We could have done the plus 21 that we had earlier because I think we had a 21 Spires earlier. But, uh, yeah, that's the 20 Spires. Hopefully this video was uh, helpful. And I would like to... Keep doing VOD reviews and stuff, so feel free to uh, check out my Patreon if you're interested in in having a VOD review done. Otherwise, feel free to like DM me or message me in my Discord, the community Discord, and just link me a VOD, and I will, if I get, you know, if I have enough time, I'll definitely get around to, to watching it. And I think I'm I'm interested in doing like viewer submitted VODs, uh, VOD reviews, so I could have like a channel in my Discord, and then people could post their VODs or their logs in there, and then I could make like essentially make YouTube content out of them and and like use those VODs and logs for review and show you guys how I would look at, you know, other people playing the game and stuff. So thank you guys for watching and uh, if you like this video, let me know and let me know what I could have done better to improve it. So have a good one and see you all next time.